Good morning. Uh, just confirm if you're able to hear me so that we can start. Uh, guys, can you confirm in the chat box if you are able to hear me? Oh, thank you, Nanipa. Uh, thank you. That is important because I may conduct the session thinking that uh, everyone is hearing me when in actual fact I'm speaking alone this side. Uh, welcome to the second semester for business management. Uh, in this case, uh, semester we are mainly focusing on BC 1 to 3 F. And I believe uh, we made it. Uh, in BEC 112F. So to those that actually made it, uh, congratulations. Uh, to those that didn't make it, there's still another chance. So you will be able to redo the, the module, BEC 112F. Of this semester, we are going to mainly focus on financial management, which is your chapter 14. Then we will also look at purchasing and supply management, which is your chapter 15 uh, in the prescribed textbook. Uh, your prescribed textbook, if you read in the learning guide, uh, is the 11th edition uh, of the book published by Oxford University Press, uh, Introduction to Business Management uh, by So your learning guide has already been posted on Blackboard. I'm sure you have uh, seen the day, test dates. Uh, you have read what is important for purposes of this module. Uh, you also took note of important information regarding the departmental administrator, where to find them, uh, the HODs, where to find the code and the course coordinator. Uh, and where to also find uh, the lecture and the course coordinate. So I am proceeding with uh, BC123. Okay, I see Tabiso is saying uh, he cannot hear me. Others, can you confirm, please, if you are able to hear me? If you are able to hear me, just type, I can hear. Uh, or just raise up your hand if you can, if you are able to hear me. Just indicate by raising up your hand. Okay, uh, so it appears um, the majority can actually hear me. So uh, those who are not able to hear, please, uh, maybe there's something wrong with the uh, Thank you to all those that, have in, that are indicating that they can hear me. I'm sure Tabiso will sort out the, the gadget that he's using. There may be an issue there. Uh, those that may also miss what I've said, maybe because of the problems with the gadgets, I'm re uh, recording this session. So they will be able to, to follow. I was saying I'm continuing with BC 123F after we complete together BC 112F. Uh, and just to, to just for the sake of information, please note that uh, for those that are in the mainstream, they actually cover content for BC 112F and BEC 123F in the module um, with the course code BEC121, uh, BEC121. So you will find out that uh, you are actually covering the same content with those that are doing their first But they will be covering six chapters. You are only covering three. 
So you do not have any excuse of not passing this module with flying colors. If you put your mind to it, you'll be able to actually pass it uh, with distinctions. Uh, with regards to general information regarding the module, I'm not sure if there are people with questions. I'm not sure if there are people with questions. Uh, those that are raising hands, is it uh, hands from the previous exercise or you want to say something? Okay, uh, the other issue that we also have to look at uh, is the issue of class reps, class representatives, uh, but we will do that at the end of the session. So if you want to retain the class reps that we had in the previous semester, provided they did not fail the module. Uh, so if they passed bc 112 f and you want to retain them as your class reps, uh, for BC 123F, uh, please, you ought to indicate uh, towards the end of this uh, of this lecture. But if there are other people who want to volunteer, you will also be given an opportunity to do so. Uh, and if there are other people, then we will uh, vote to decide on who will be the four class reps. So for today, we are going to start uh, on financial management, which is one of the courses, one or not of the courses, one of the chapters uh, in this course. In the previous semester, we looked at uh, operations management as one of the functions in the business. We also looked at marketing management, resources management. So this semester, we are starting with financial management. Uh, and this is also another important function in the business. And uh, by the end of the session or by the end of the chapter, we ought uh, to be in a position to actually describe and apply the fundamental principles of financial management, the most important principles. We also ought to be in a position to determine the break-even point of a business organization. Uh, those that have a basic understanding of financial management should remember that the break-even point is that point at which a firm is not making either profits or losses. Uh, this will also need you to recall the basic uh, information that you guys learned in micro microeconomics. I'm sure that was equal one 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 F and equal one one two F. So you learned how to calcul calculate the break-even points, but uh, we will also look at it in financial management. But the principle is basically the same. Uh, you should also be in a position to calculate the present values and the future values of amounts. Uh, point from one of the fundamental uh, principles of financial management, the time value of money, where we will be saying uh, a rent that you receive today is far more, um, actually is more value than the rent that you may receive tomorrow. So from that principle, we should also be in a position to calculate uh, the present values of future uh, cash flows or future amounts or calculate the future values of the amounts that we may be having today. Obviously, taking into account the cost of capital or uh, interest, be it compounded or not compounded. Uh, you also ought to be in a position to analyze and interpret financial statements of an organization or of a business enterprise. Uh, financial statements, those that have already taken account that there are a number of financial statements that one can analyze or that can be available in an organization 
or that should actually be prepared uh, by those managing the organization or managing the finances in an organization. These obviously include your <clears throat> income statements. Uh, some refer to it as the trading uh, profit and loss uh, account. Uh, financial statements may also include what is commonly known as the balance sheet. Some refer to it uh, with another name, as we will see also uh, as we proceed with this uh, chapter. You may also need to analyze the cash flow statements. Because in some cases, businesses actually make profits, but they struggle to survive, or they actually fail because of lack of working capital. You may be making a profit, but you fail to generate finances for the day-to-day -day operations of the business. So it is something that we should also think about how it is so and whether it is actually possible that a firm can fail, although it is making profits. Uh, we should also, we will also besides issues of uh, financial statements or analyzing and interpreting financial statements, also um, make use of ratio analysis to make investment decisions. I uh, will also apply other strategies to evaluate investment decisions. We will also look at issues of uh, managing financial assets of the organization. And also uh, understanding financial planning how do we plan for financial resources in an organization? How do we raise financial resources? And which financial resources are important for which uh, projects? Can we finance fi um, long-term projects using short-term finances? Can we finance uh, short-term projects using long-term finance? How must we go about it? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? So basically, that's what we ought to be in a position to answer uh, at the end of this uh, session, or at the end of this chapter, actually, uh, so that I do not rush uh, anyone. Uh, is there anyone with a question? Is there anyone with a question? Okay, I do not see anyone raising a hand, neither do I see anyone trying to unmute so that they can say anything. But this is also worrying if people are quiet and they don't say anything, because you will not be sure whether they are following, whether they have disappeared from their gadgets, or whether they are actually lost completely. So a simple indication uh, here and there will be necessary. OK, so financial management is the art and science of obtaining enough finances for a business at the lowest cost, investing it in assets to earn a return that is greater than the cost of capital, and also managing the profitability, the liquidity, and the solvency of the business. So there are a number of questions that should be answered in financial management. And these questions revolve um, around uh, they revolve around um, investment decisions. Which projects should we invest in? How long should we invest in particular projects? Uh, how can we manage those uh, projects? There are a number of financial management questions which managers ought to be able to 
to answer. I see there is a question by one uh, by Tabiso in the in the chat box. And the question reads, are we going to be asked to prepare those financial statements or it's just theory? So in accounting, you will be asked to actually prepare these financial statements. But in business management, we have uh, options. We can ask you to prepare these financial statements, one, which is simple, it's straightforward. But most importantly, on our side, um, we understand that you may not be <clears throat> responsible for bookkeeping in the organization, although you must be in a position to understand bookkeeping. So we can provide you with information in the financial statements and ask you to analyze it and to interpret it. So instead of just asking you to prepare a balance sheet or an income statement or a cash flow statement, we can provide you with the three financial statements and ask you certain questions uh, to actually determine or to actually see on whether what is contained in those documents. So we are starting at an advanced level where you ought to be able to analyze, understand, to understand, analyze, and interpret financial statements, not only to prepare them. Because if it's a matter of preparing them, you just claim the headings and then look for the figures and you place the figures where they are supposed to be and you calculate, that's it. But for purposes of to be in a position to understand financial statements, be in a position to interpret them, and also to analyze them. Uh, I hope I have answered uh, that question. So I have provided the basic definition of financial management and what is covered. I described it as both an act and also a science of raising enough capital uh, for business at the lowest cost. And in this case, at the lowest cost, we are saying at the lowest uh, interest rate. If you are to negotiate, it has to be at the lowest. Because many times the cost of capital relates to interest that you then pay. Uh, financial management also uh, include investing in assets so that you also earn an interest, not uh, to just keep money under the pillow. Uh, as you will see when we finally discuss the time value of money. Uh, we will also look at uh, the concepts in financial management, uh, objectives and fundamental principles of financial management, as I said earlier, the cost, volume, profit relationships, time value of money, uh, this is also one of the principles, financial analysis, planning, and control. So these are also further explained in this slide we are going to be looking at. I uh, will also look at asset management uh, for current assets, then for long-term investment decisions, uh, we also look uh, at uh, long-term financing, the cost of capital, uh, which in most cases relates to interest, and the chapter will have been concluded. So you will see that most of the things that we are actually doing are pretty much straightforward, but they will need you to apply your mind. Uh, so that you'll be able to understand these uh, financial statements, be in a position to analyze them and also to interpret them. So the financial function of an organization uh, or financial management in an organization is concerned with the flow of finances or the flow of an organization. Uh, the first aspect being the acquisition of funds. Where do we get funds? 
where should we borrow? And remember, we should borrow or we should obtain or acquire funds at the lowest possible cost. Then it's also concerned with the application of funds for the acquisition of assets. So basically, it's concerned about the use of funds, the investment of funds in an organ, uh, by an organization. Uh, financial management is also concerned with administration and reporting on financial matters, where you actually prepare, analyze, uh, and also interpret financial statements. Uh, they perform uh, a number of tasks, people in the uh, finance, uh, finance function, uh, analyze finance, uh, financial reports, plan for financial purposes, and control for financial purposes. Uh, they manage uh, the use of funds and they decide where to obtain funds. Uh, this figure in your textbook generally depicts the relationship between the financial management function and other functional management areas that are related to discipline and uh, the environment. So you see the tasks that are performed uh, by those in financial management function. Then you also see other uh, functional management areas from operations management, human resources management, purchasing and supply management, uh, marketing management, public relations, all those functions, they also rely on the finance function or on financial management function. It's also important to realize that there are other subject disciplines that are related to financial management. For example, your accounting, uh, both financial and accounting, then your economics, uh, statistics, communication science, information management, uh, business management, you re also realize that those disciplines, they are also in one way or another related to financial management. And some of the aspects that we will actually cover in this chapter, you may realize that they are also covered in some of those disciplines. Uh, effect on financial management or on how finances are managed in an organization are also depicted on this um, figure, on figure 14.1, which is also in your textbook. Okay, so we move on to the concepts in financial management. Uh, the first one that we look at is the statement of financial position. The statement of the fi of financial position. Uh, this is one document which provides an overview of the financial position of the business or of an organization. This is what is also referred to by others as the balance sheet. And as you know, a balance sheet has two sides. The assets of the organization and the other side shows how the assets were actually financed. So those two, they should always be equal to each other. The value of assets that we have both current and uh, non-current, they should be equal to how they were financed. So normally assets are financed by capital. They are also financed by borrowed funds, which 
are basically liabilities. So uh, just know that uh, the statement of financial position provides a snapshot of the financial position of the business. I am adding to say a snapshot because this is it's prepared as at a particular date and it can change any time after that particular time uh, that it has been prepared. So if you read the newspapers, if you read uh, financial uh, information of companies or other business organizations, you will realize that financial uh, statements of financial position or balance sheets of organizations is it. They are not prepared for the period, like with the case of other financial statements, such as your income statement or your cash flow statement. A, a, a statement of financial position is prepared as it, so that it only provides that snapshot of the financial position of the business. The asset side of the statement financial position or the asset side of the balance sheet reflects all material possessions of the business. And these assets represent the asset structure. So we have what are known as uh, non-current assets. As a basic rule of thumb, these are assets that cannot be converted into cash. They cannot easily be converted into cash in a very short uh, period of time. Buildings, uh, other assets such as uh, cars, machines, those are non-current assets. You can't just wake up uh, and be able to convert them into cash. Then we also have what are known as current assets. Uh, these are assets that can easily be converted into cash. And they include your stock, which you normally want to sell, be it finished products. It also includes your cash, which is already in the form of cash. The money in the bank or the amount in uh, the balance in banks, those are your current assets. Your debtors, people who are owing you, you can quickly collect from them uh, and convert those debtors into cash. I think it's also necessary for me to just highlight that there are other current assets that are not so easy to convert into cash. Uh, if you read financial statements of organizations, especially the income statement, you will realize that stock or inventory, as some may refer to it, uh, is normally uh, is actually treated as a current asset, or in actual fact, it is a current asset. If you read financial statements, you realize that they are always there is always opening stock in the in the organization uh, for every period, and there is always closing stock. And that gives an indication to say stock may be problematic and may not always be easily converted into cash. So you see when we are calculating our ratios that uh, in as much as stock we treat it as a current asset, there are cases where we also ought to treat it a bit different with other current assets. So if you are taking notes, uh, just take note that uh, when we are calculating uh, the current ratio, there is a difference between calculating the current ratio and what is known as the acid test ratio. So the, the, the problematic nature of stock is actually seen uh, by the difference, uh, by that difference in calculating the current ratio 
and in calculating the acid test ratio. So that is the asset side. Assets basically are possessions of the organization, what the organization actually own, what belongs to the But we also have the other side on how as these assets are financed, whether current or non-current. How do we obtain them as an organization? Like I said earlier, in some cases we use capital, which we will discuss about. But in some instances, we also you uh, we can also borrow. So whenever we borrow, uh, we generate what is known as a liability. So liabilities basically uh, refer to what the organization actually owe what you are owing to others. And these can also be in the form of current liabilities or non-current liabilities. Current liabilities, these are those that ought to be settled uh, or paid back within a short period of time. But we also have long-term liabilities paid in a very short period of time. For example, your long-term loans may not need to be paid in a very short uh, period of time. But if you have borrowed maybe in the form of an overdraft where interest is actually charged on a daily basis, uh, you need to quickly pay out that. So it becomes your current liability. But there are also other forms of financing uh, those assets. For example, share uh, long-term funds, which can be in the form of debentures, loans, and so forth, and also uh, short-term funds, which can be in the form of short-term liability, which, is, which are basically short-term liabilities, or your current liabilities. Uh, if there's anyone with a question relating to the statement of financial position. If you don't have a question, you can type for me any word that you remember uh, from the statement of financial position. What is it that you managed to get hold of? What is it that you remember from what we discussed? or from what I said, because you guys are quiet. For me, the chat box quickly so that I move on to another concept in financial management. If you are still in the session, please uh, indicate one word or one phrase that you managed to get uh, from the statement of financial position that we discussed. Okay, I see I can wait until tomorrow here. But if you're in the session, please, I still need to see that. So I'm moving on to, concept, to, to capital, which is basically the accrued power of disposal over products and services used by a business to generate profit. Uh, I did not take you guys uh, when you covered the chapter two, entrepreneurship. But I remember in that chapter, you also described capital 
as the amount or the money that you use to start a business. So capital is still that money that you use to start a business. Uh, and we describe the accrued power of disposal over products and services used by a business to generate a monetary return or to generate a profit. So you use capital to generate a profit, just as you start a business to generate a profit. So you need capital for investing in long-term uh, assets, in non-current assets. So that is the need for fixed capital, so that you acquire machines, land, and other capital equipment. You also need capital uh, so that you invest in current assets. And there is that need for working capital. In uh, simplest terms, working capital is the amount that you need for the day-to-day -day operations of the business. And in terms of calculations, uh, to calculate working capital, you deduct your current liabilities from your current so here there is need for a business management student to be able to identify all current assets and by current assets uh, we include cash we include cash equivalents so you should make it your your duty to actually look for all examples of current assets. Because when we give you time to, 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 to just explain, we may also uh, test you on whether you are actually able to identify these. But we can give you a, a task to calculate uh, work, working capital or to calculate the current ratio, the acid test ratio where you actually need to be in a position to add all current assets, to add all current liabilities. Uh, if you do not know how to calculate, uh, if you do not know which one is a current asset, which one is a current liability, uh, you will have problems in calculating those ratios. You will also have problems even in calculating working capital. Uh, thank you, Tabiso. Uh, thank you, uh, Nadipa. Uh, at least I see that there are two people that are following uh, in the session. So, capital, I'm sure we uh, managed to get it. We managed to also understand it. Uh, then there is also this concept, uh, income. What is income? Uh, receipts resulting from the sale of products uh, or services. It can also be obtained from other sources such as uh, interest on investments. So if you look at examples of financial statements that you may come across you may see that there is an amount that is normally recorded as sales. That is basically income. Uh, then after they calculate the cost of sales, normally It can also be obtained from such as uh, interest on investments. So to calculate income, the most uh, the, the, the the simple formula to calculate income 
is basically to multiply the number of units that you have sold uh, by the price per unit. And obviously, you should remember to also add any other income. Uh, and in most cases, it may be in the form of interest uh, generated. Uh, then we also have uh, another concept, uh, which is also commonly used in financial management, cost. Cost. Uh, if you have already done microeconomics, I know you have already done uh, your fixed costs. Uh, you understand them. You have already done your variable costs. You should. You may also have done uh, total costs, and you are also able to depict them on a graph. Uh, normally, this is done in microeconomics. Uh, we also do it even in operations management. Uh, when we want to just show that there are certain costs that may be fixed, then there are other costs that may uh, vary with the number of units that are produced. So if you take uh, operations management at second year level uh, as a module, you will actually be able to see some of these costs also creeping in or coming uh, for you to to discuss them then uh there are also other costs uh which are known as uh, direct costs normally if you are doing manufacturing accounting direct costs and indirect costs uh, then administration costs, we may look at them as uh, sort of some overhead expenses. So there are certain costs that we look at here, uh, which are basically used in manufacturing um, accounting. Then there are also terms that we see here, uh, like fixed costs, variable costs, semi-variable costs, variable costs per unit, and total costs. Uh, in operations management and in microeconomics. Microeconomics is basically economics of the firm. That's why it relates also with operations uh, management. So costs basically relate to the monetary value that is sacrificed in the production of goods uh, or in the rendering of services. That, are, that is actually for the purpose of what resale so if you produce goods for purposes of resale the monetary value that you sacrifice is what we refer to as a cost so it is that which we ought to deduct from sales to determine a profit or to determine a loss if we have been unreasonable to a point where costs are higher than the income So, also on this particular slide, uh, I will be happy if I can hear what you guys know about these costs. If you can at least tell me some of the basic characteristics of these costs that you know or that you have covered in other modules, uh, I will be glad uh, to hear that from you. So, are there any takers? I know direct costs, indirect costs, overhead expenses. Uh, you may not have already covered these as they relate to manufacturing accounting. So if you are taking financial accounting uh, now, these are some of the costs that you will then be using uh, this year or this in this semester, that is if you are taking accounting one-to-one. -one. Otherwise, what I, I am more interested to hear from you is the, are the costs that you actually covered in economics, your fixed costs, variable costs, semi-variable costs, and um, variable cost in it, and the total cost. So if you can at least uh, highlight these, I, I will be happy. Uh, I see Tabiso is saying administration costs 
uh, is not regarded as an overhead expense. These are recorded separately. Yes, that is correct. Uh, if I have stated that, I may have stated it in error. Actual administration costs are recorded separately. Uh, in manufacturing. Uh, as an RT is saying, a fixed cost is a cost that does not change with an increase or decrease in the number of goods or services that are produced or, uh, or sold. Uh, Liabona, you can proceed. Uh, as an RT, thank you for that contribution. Fixed costs uh, tend to be um, recurring. Um, for instance, interest or rent being paid per month. And this cost can also tend to be capital costs. Uh, apologies, I, I did not get it. Uh, I think when you started, uh, your, your line was not clear on my side. So if you can please go ahead uh, or go again so that I can uh, also hear. Sorry for that, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Um, fixed costs um, are considered to be um, recurring, such as interest or rent being paid per month. And these costs also tend to be capital costs. Oh, thank you. Thank you for those uh, important points. They tend to be capital costs. They are also recurring. Uh, that is in describing uh, the fixed costs. That if you are paying it per month, normally you pay it per month. And as Asenat said, they normally do not change uh, with the level of production or with the quantity that you produce. Any other costs uh, that you guys want to discuss? Anyone to decide for me variable costs? Yes, Nangom, so at least you, you are back now. I can see you in the session. Uh, variable costs change uh, and it depends on the unit produced. So that's what uh, Nangom so is saying. Variable costs, these are costs that change um, with the quantity that is produced. Anyone else to describe uh, variable costs? Uh, I know there is another definition of this cost, which is um, interesting or more interesting or more clear. Variable costs. Okay, uh, so variable costs in addition to what others said, um, variable costs are related to the cost of producing one additional unit. One additional unit. So that's why Nangomso is saying these costs are total variable costs. They, they, they actually these costs are uh, those variable costs. They change. If you produce, let's say, one unit, uh, the total variable cost will be different um, than when you produce more. So if you produce more, the cost will be increasing. This cost increase with the quantity that you actually produce. Then we also have what is known as the variable cost per unit. Normally, the variable cost per unit does not change. So we are saying if you produce, uh, if the cost of producing one unit is four, let's say four rand, if you produce two, then it means it's eight rand. If you produce three, it costs two rand, 16 rand, uh, increasing that way. But now if it's, um, variable cost per unit if you calculate it you will realize that it remains the same 
because it's the cost of producing one unit. Uh, Nangomso is giving a, an example of a variable cost is the cost of raw materials, uh, which is to say if you are to produce more, you also incur more of those variable costs. And if you are to produce less raw materials, you also incur less costs. So normally the total costs, uh, we arrive to, to total cost after adding fixed costs and those variable costs. Uh, variable cost per unit, uh, you know, like saying this is the variable cost per unit is the amount of labor and other resources. Yes, when you finally cal calculate these for finished products, you take into account all the other expenses to see how much will it cost you in total to produce one particular unit. Uh, and I see other explanations from me uh, that are coming from uh, which also relate to variable costs. But in summary, uh, it shows that these costs, these variable costs, they change with the quantity that is produced. So that is the main difference between uh, variable costs and your fixed costs. Then there are graphs that you need to remember from microeconomics, uh, which also depict uh, total fixed costs. And in this case, on your horizontal axis, we always have quantity. On your vertical uh, axis, we have your costs. And with total fixed costs, it's clear on this graph that um, the costs do not change with the increase or decrease in quantity that is produced. Uh, then uh, when we look at uh, the graphical representation of fixed costs per unit, we realize that the costs actually decrease with the increase in the quantity that is produced. And I will be interested also in knowing why is it the case with total, um, with uh, total, with, with fixed costs per unit. Because in the previous slide, we learned that fixed costs, they generally do not change with the quantity that is produced. But why are they changing now when we calculate these fixed costs per unit? Why is there a change when we calculate these fixed costs per unit? How do they change? How do they decrease? Anyone to explain? or anyone to give an example. Okay, uh, just to give a hint, uh, the example is linked to what is known as the economies of scale which you guys covered also in microeconomics. Okay, my question is, with the total fixed costs in the previous slide, which I'm trying to project, yes, which I'm projecting now, we see that uh, these costs do not change with either an increase or a decrease in output or a, an increase or a decrease in the quantity that is produced if you are to look at it from an operations management perspective 
But now, if we look at the fixed cost per unit, the costs actually decrease as the quantity that is produced is increasing. So I'm saying why is Or oh, how is it so? Anyone to explain to me? Okay, Siabulela is saying it's because of the number of units produced. Okay, so if you produce more, uh, the cost of production tends to go down because that cost, uh, which does not change, is now actually accounting for more units. So the cost per unit uh, decreases. For example, let's say you are You are renting a certain place and you are rearing uh, what they refer to as broilers. If you decide to, rear, to, to use that place, maybe to keep a, 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 a smaller number of broilers, let's say 50, and they've said the, the rent there uh, is maybe 500 per month, and it's a bigger space. If you keep 50 broilers, and you calculate how much is the fixed cost to, uh, in terms of rent per each broiler, you will realize that it may actually be 10, uh, 10 rand. But now, if you produce 100, you will see that the, the cost per unit may actually be different. And if you can produce 200, it will decrease further. If you can produce 500, it will be far, far less per unit. So that's where they, they, they use what is known as the economies of scale to say as you produce more, the fixed cost of production or the, general, the cost of production in general uh, tends to go down. It doesn't mean the variable costs will go down, no. But the cost is mainly made up of the fixed costs plus the variable costs. So in as much as the fixed cost per unit decreases, it decreases also the total cost per unit. Uh, I hope uh, that is a bit clearer or is clearer to you. I'm also happy with the comments that are made uh, in the chat box. Uh, Nangomso uh, also uh, made a comment there. Our total variable costs, as was explained, the cost increase with the quantity that is produced. 
So there is no issue with this particular uh, graph. Variable cost per unit, we have also explained that uh, if you calculate those variable costs and you reduce it per unit, it's basically the same. It doesn't change. Uh, how to calculate total cost? Basically, remember, you have these costs that do not change. Then you also have variable costs that change depending on the quantity that you produce. So total costs, you add these two. Uh, I know we should also explain uh, Generally, you, when after um, you you deduct your costs from your from your income or from your sales, uh, you come up with a figure. If that figure is positive, then it is a profit. If it is negative, then it is a loss. This is why we always try to cost and try to increase the income so that we we'll end up making a profit. So if the income uh, exceeds the costs, uh, the difference will be positive, so you will have made a profit. But if the opposite happens, whereby your costs are more than your income, then you have made a loss. A statement of the financial a statement of financial performance. Uh, some refer to it as the income uh, statement. It furnishes about the manner in which the profit or loss for a particular period was arrived at, and how it has been distributed. So this is the income statement. Some refer to it uh, with other names. Trading profit and loss accounts. Uh, they are different names, but basically it's a statement of financial performance. Uh, figure 14.8 of your textbook also provides a graphical uh, representation uh, of that statement. So from your textbook, you should also see how gross profit is arrived at. Uh, normally, it's your sales, then you deduct the cost of goods sold so that you will arrive at your gross uh, profit, which is uh, seen here as your, as your uh, gross. Then if you deduct also the cost of products that were sold, okay, let me actually, I'm referring to a different one, not the one that is depicted. Let me use the one that is depicted here. It is a gross income, which is your sales, all your sales, uh, whereby you are multiplying the selling price by the number of uh, products or units sold. Then you did, if you deduct your those products that have been retained by customers and your cash discount, you will remain with what is known as your net sales. So if you had read other financial statements or if you had read other income statements, you may have are your sales, then they deduct what are known as sales returns so that you will have net sales. Then from net sales, if you deduct the costs of products sold or the cost of goods sold, uh, that's when you then arrive at uh, the gross profit. 
Our gross profit, if you deduct your operating costs, you will then arrive at operating profit. And if you deduct interest that was paid, uh, you arrive at profit before tax. If you deduct uh, tax or provision for tax, you will then arrive at uh, net profit or profit after tax. Then you will distribute it uh, until you remain with uh, undistributed profit that you may retain in the organization. So in the next session, we will start on objective of financial management. So I can actually move. I'm, I'm not sure. Can we take three or four slides? Or you prefer that we start in the next session? Uh, can I get an indication? Uh, should we stop here or should we continue? Um, take two or so slides. Guys, I'm waiting for your indication. If you are tired, uh, we can still proceed in the next session. It's not like we should cover everything in one session. Okay, uh, I see Nogusola is proposing that. No, it's better to stop here so that you can also go through what we have covered and um, proceed in the next session. Okay, uh, guys, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's better to stop here. Uh, if you want also to move forward, I refer you to recordings that were already prepared. There is already um, recorded that you can also use uh, to move forward and to prepare for future classes. So thank you so much for attending. Attendance of classes is compulsory. And uh, it's also important for you to note that uh, on Blackboard, I don't need to take a register. It records the time that you log in. It also gives me the time that you left uh, the session. So it's always important to remember that attendance is compulsory and you should always attend these sessions. Uh, so having uh, used one hour, I think it's necessary that we stop here. Uh, I will proceed from here in the next session. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I see the comments. I take note of the comments. Uh, yes, uh, Siabulela, I will not be around next week. I'm attending and presenting at a conference. So I know if I'm away off campus, it may be tricky uh, to say I will have a, a lecture. But I will try by all means on Wednesday. On Wednesday, I will try by all means uh, to conduct my session, to conduct my lecture. So I'm not saying there won't be a lecture as such, but it's only that I will not be around campus. So I'm not sure if the environment where I will be will permit uh, me to conduct a, a lecture. But I will be willing to actually conduct a lecture. But if it's not possible, I will communicate. And I hope you guys will also understand. So for now, I, I, I would actually, I think it's safe to, in, to indicate that I will not be around next week. I'm attending a conference so you can use also the material that is pre-recorded to cover this chapter of financial management. But when I come back, I will start where we have left. But I may be moving a little bit faster so that we um, 
you have the opportunity to ask questions and also complete it to be able to answer questions in tests. So thank you for that question. I you are free, you can also switch on your video so that your classmates that do not know you can attach your face uh, to the name. Especially if you do not speak in class, especially if you are one of those that just come, that just uh, log in and keep quiet. Uh, you can actually switch on your video. You can also unmute your mic so that uh, people can hear. 